when you run out of mana, you just have to spam Peril Rage a lot. Um, I'm amplified damage right now, which is scary. Honestly, I think I'd be doing a lot. Oh, God. Well, check this out. <laughs> I'm murdering this soul group. That's how you know. That's how you know it's a good build. Ooh, a unique Naga. Oh, God, I'm scared. More souls. Can we do it? Want to see something real scary? Yes, we can. What's up, guys? Welcome to another video. It's your boy, Conjurus Hex, back at you with another build guide. My number one favorite build to play in Diablo 2, the Werewolf Druid. It's going to be a complete guide. I'm going to start with the skill tree and my stat distribution real fast and simple. Then we're going to dive into gear, into budget gear and godly gear. Then I'm going to show you some gameplay with the budget gear and again with the god gear to really impress you and really convince you that how cool of a character this is. Hope you guys pick it up. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's dive right into it. Okay, let's start with the skills. 20 points into Werewolf, obviously, and again, 20 points into Lycanthropy because they synergize off each other. They just make your Werewolf form more and more effective. You're going to put 20 points into Feral Rage, which is one of the main attacks you'll be using. One point into Rabies, only because it's a prerequisite to Fury, which is your main attack. Also, 20 points. So we're going to go 20, 20, 20, 20. Fury is your main attack that makes you attack fast, 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 whack, 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 whack. That's why it's your main skill, because this build is all about whacking fast. Uh, Feral Rage gives you lifesteal. You proc it, makes that red bubble float around you. That means you have more and more lifesteal the bigger and bigger that ball gets. You'll see how it works in the gameplay, but you essentially proc that, make it bigger, proc, proc, proc. Then once you're fully maxed on that orb, you use Fury as your main attack. You're attacking whackity, whack, 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 and lifestealing more and more and more as you whack more and more. But anyways, I'm, I'm divulging too much ahead of time. You'll see it when I do the gameplay. Nothing into Elemental, Shapeshifting is our main tree, then into Summoning, you get one point into Grizzly as a summon, and then obviously one point into the prerequisites, because you need them to get Grizzly, and then you can choose between one of these, either Oak Sage, a summon that passively increases your life, or another summon that's like a spirit that passively increases your damage. Take your pick, I personally like the one that does damage, Heart of the Wolverine, but just pick one, one or the other. Either 20 points into Oak Sage or work towards 20 points into Heart of the Wolverine. Right now I'm at 14, I'm almost there. That's the last skill that I'm maxing out. Now the stat distribution. It's really the same as 90% of other builds. You're going to hear this a lot if you're watching a lot of Diablo 2 guides. But basically, enough strength for gear, enough dexterity for gear. Put the rest into vitality, nothing into energy. It's pretty much the same for 9 out of 10 characters with some exceptions, but I'm going to make that fast and simple. Now, I definitely wanted to breeze through that because the real topic I wanted to get into is the gear. What gear am I using, you say? Well, here comes the big reveal. Look at him. Look at that cute little staff, huh? Isn't he adorable? All right, we're going to go from left to right here. Each, you know, piece of the gear, the headpiece, body armor, weapon, etc. I'm going to go through each of them individually. First, start with the budget options, then get into the godly gear on the right. Um, let's start with the helm. First off, you're a druid. Your class item is a druid pelt. Get something with plus to druid skills, you know, anything at all. You'll find something along the way, you know, plus to druid skills, plus to shapeshifting skills like this. This is actually a pretty good one. Um, skills wise, but you could probably find a rare one that has plus the skills, has some resistance on it, maybe some faster hit recovery. Um, yeah, that's going to be your standard basic, basic helm that you'll probably find along the way. Just a few other options just for fun, maybe a G face. It's actually surprisingly easy to find. You'll probably find one along the way. Uh, faster hit recovery, big chance of crushing below 35%, and then addition bonus, you know, 15% deadly strike, you know, but it's mainly for the crushing blow, 35% chance what crushing blow is and it's going to be a stat that we're going to be seeing a lot in this build we're going to need to want a lot of it because it's really useful it's, it's kind of like static field from a sorceress except applied to a melee attack it's not as much as static field static field is really overpowered and broken but it's it's the next best thing for a melee character it chunks down a percentage of the enemy's health instead of just applying a flat damage number it's just a chunk percentage um and i'm not going to explain the whole thing with that it's just no crushing blow is good for a melee character you want to stack it um, in the end for this character, if, if I do wear a G face with my other godly gear, 
um, I'll have a hundred percent crushing blow. And that's really, that's really great. Every single hit that I land chunks up a certain percentage. Um, anyways, just a third option that I thought was fun. Rockstar, it has resistances. It has faster hit recovery. It has damage reduced by 10%. Uh, just throwing in a third option there. Um, and finally, the best in slot, a helm for a, a shape-shifting druid. Jalal's main. Um, I did put an um rune in it. You don't have to do that. That's kind of the next step. You socket it with Lars. I can put an um rune for extra resistances. But anyways, the main draw to this pelt is the skills, the faster hit recovery. It has some attack rating, some good strength and energy, and some all res built into it. Before I even put the um into it, it has built in all res. Uh, plus five to mana after each kill is great, but mainly the skills. Two to shapeshifting, two to druid, those really stack up. For body armor, and this one, honestly, this is just such a universal um, one that I recommend uh, for a lot of characters. Like, kind of just, you know, there may be other options, but I just, you know, recommend this just for convenience. I could just kind of swap it between other characters. A smoke, rune word, two sockets, nephlum, mainly for the 50% all res, um, or plus 50 all res. Uh, mainly for that, honestly, I mean, it has good defense versus missile, faster hit recovery, that's great too. Um, but, you know, when you're trying to survive hell, you just need a little extra boost to resistances. It's nice to have this if you don't have any other items that, that do that. Um, in the similar note vein, however you want to call it, Durio Shell, same deal, and then it also has cannot be frozen. Um, so it has good resistances, plus the strength is cute. Uh, you know, resistances and cannot be frozen, simple enough. Uh, that's why I would suggest the real shell. Um, and this armor that I'm wearing right now, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it the godly, godly gear, um, but it's actually surprisingly affordable. Um, you know, the most uh, expensive part of this uh, rune word is the um rune. You'll, uh, you'll find it eventually. Um, it's really good for a melee character, a pretty standard one, really. Faster hit recovery, a little extra bonus cold damage, but mainly for the extra crushing blow. Remember, that's what's a stat that's going to show up a lot in this build. 15% crushing blow, 33% open wounds, and then some resistances. Nice resistances to round off a good item. Mainly the crushing blow. You want to stack that up, and we'll eventually get to 100%. Really what I want for like the, you know, the GG best in slot gear is a Chains of Honor rune word, but that's pretty expensive. I haven't found my Burr rune yet. Um, one day I'll get it. Once I do, I think this character might be ready to do Uber, so stay tuned for that. Next are gloves and one, another, you know, good set item, kind of similar to the G-Face here. One that you'll probably find along the way. It's mainly for the damage to demons and 50% fire res. Um, that plus 350% damage to demons, that's really useful. I mean, a lot of the monsters you're going to be fighting will be demons. Um, and that's a good boost, you know, fire res. And it's just easy to find. That's kind of the main reason that I like it. Now, on the other hand, I mean... I can't go wrong with an IK um, gauntlet. I mean, it's not, not as good as lay, laying of hands. IK uh, gauntlet is not as good as that. But um, curveball um, for a budget belt, just because it's really easy for me to suggest, and sometimes you find the other, the other uh, pieces to this, the belt is going to be the Immortal King belt, mainly for the resistances, and it gives you plus the strength. If you did end up want to end up using the IK Maul, which I'm jumping ahead a little bit, I'll stick to gloves here, but you can kind of see a, a, a kind of theme, kind of a preference, kind of a personal preference that if you want to go budget, that is an option. So those two are uh, gloves, um, but the godly gloves are the Dracul's Grasp gloves, mainly for the 5% uh, chance to cast level 10 life tap on striking. Life tap is a necromancer curse that makes it so the cursed monsters give you life steal. And life tap is pretty good. It gives you really good life steal when it procs. It also has built in 10% life steal on the glove itself. Open wounds, five to mana after each kill, 15 to the strength, good. Helps round out the strength. But this is really good mainly for the life tap and the life steal. It really gets you survivable. Now, I already talked a little bit about the belt. You know, IK belt is cool. Even something cheaper like a, like a Saigon's belt, you know, 20 to life, 20 to fire res. I mean... If you're looking for just a random belt, resistances, life, hit recovery, stuff like that is good. Um, IK belt, like I said, a budget option. Um, the belt that you know you're gonna end up with though, string of ears, eight percent life steal. You'll see some life steal here and there. What's really good is the damage reduced by fourteen percent. You know that's a really um, good chunk of damage uh, that it protects you from. So that and the life steal. That's why string of ears is pretty good. Next, the boots. Um, you know what? There, there were a few things I could, I could suggest. You know, sometimes I find myself using a, a Sanders boots because they're easy to find, 
and just having that extra faster run walk is great. Um, it's cool that it also has attack rating and a few stats as well. But this is an easy one to find if you don't know what else to put in it. Um, again, I just throw the Immortal King uh, boots in there as well. I mean, if you do end up going this route, you end up getting some uh, set bonuses, so that's pretty cool. Uh, next in line, Goblin Toad. Doesn't have any faster run walk. Ooh, thanks for the subscribe. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Goblin Toe, mainly for the crushing blow. Um, it has even more crushing blow added to it than the GG boots that I'm about to show you next. It just doesn't have faster run walk, so that's a little bit of a pain, but it's good, you know, if you have nothing else to do. Um, it's just an alternative. But finally, the really good boots that are pretty common for any melee character. 50% chance of crushing blow, 15% deadly strike, open wounds, and faster runner walk. Just, again, just trying to stack the crushing blow, because that is key for this melee character. All right, next, jewelry. Um, I'm going to make this simple. You're going to want to find things like resistances, lifesteal. Like this, actually, this is a ring I crafted. It has really high lifesteal. You probably won't find a ring like that, but something with lifesteal, resistances, maybe life, attack rating is good. Just whatever you can find that's best, you know, the the, the numbers won't lie. Um, they'll tell you if it's good. The higher the numbers, the better. That's how this game really works in, in a nutshell. Um, lifesteal, resistances. Um, this, for example, I mean, this doesn't even have lifesteal. It just has kind of attack rating, lightning res. I mean, something like this, which is not, you know, not as good as these other ones, uh, that's an option. Uh, but for what rings that I am wearing, uh, Raven Frost, it's kind of a given. You kind of have to wear Raven Frost as a melee character, or really any character, really. Four cannot be frozen. That's really it. I mean, if you're using Durial Shell, and it already, you already have cannot be frozen somewhere else, and there'll be even a third option that I'll speak of later, but cannot be frozen. My head's covering a little bit. There it is at the bottom. Um, you need it. You need it somewhere. Raven Frost is where we're going to put it. Then this one, this one, I'm kind of a, kind of a flavor pick. Um, it has life, uh, life steal and poison res. I mean, I could swap this for the one that this other good one that has uh, big resistance, big cold res, and eleven life steal. I could swap that out, but I like this one. It's it's cool. Um, you'll see how it's fun because it's a uh, chance to cast poison nova and twister, so it adds a little flavor to the build. Finally, before we talk about weapons, the last piece of jewelry, um, the amulet, just find something with plus to skill. This one's a pretty good one, two to shape shifting, and has resistances. So really. For the jewelry, um, you know, plus skills, I mean, for the amulet specifically, plus skills, resistances, I'll keep that simple enough, maybe faster hit recovery, but um, plus skills, res, easy. However, the GG amulet that you want to work towards is a High Lord's Wrath, pretty standard amongst melee characters. I mean, a lot of these items, I would say, like Drac Dracul's Grasp, String of Ears, Gore Rider, High Lord's Wrath, those are staples. The those are staples in pretty much any melee build you'll find, or a lot of them. Um, can't go wrong. Drax, String of Ears, Gore, finally High Lords, plus the skills. The increased attack speed actually doesn't matter if you're in werewolf form, but th that's, that's okay. This is still good. The Deadly Strike and the Lightning Resist, 33% Deadly Strike, which gives you a chance to do extra bonus damage. So um, that's really the main reason you use it and the skills and the plus one to all skills. All right, let's talk weapons. Um, for the most part, you're going to want to go two-handed but I figured maybe just in case um, you didn't have that option or wanted to go one-handed, you could. You can go a one-handed weapon. Um, you could use a shield. You're probably going to use a rhyme shield. This one also has cannot be frozen and some resistances. Um, so this might be a shield you use if you decide to go one-handed. A spirit, pretty staple, although maybe maybe spirit's a little more expensive. Um, maybe it's more expensive uh, for you, in which case, I mean, a rhyme, a two-socket, a shield is not uh, as expensive. But anyways, um, one-handed options. This uh, Flesh Render Barb Club unique uh, club has some shape-shifting skills, has crushing blow, deadly strike, open wounds. That's good stuff if you just, these common uh, modifiers um, that you'll want to find. Crushing blow, deadly strike, open wounds, skills, good stuff. Even something like an Alder's Rhythm, uh, you know, increased attack speed is also good for the weapon. That's going to be really huge. You're going to see that that's a common theme as well. Increased attack speed. This has 200% damage to demons, which is also good. And some life and mana steal. So it's just a, just a curveball budget option that you could consider using um, in the middle of the game. It also has sockets. So you could put shale runes in it to give it a more uh, attack speed. Where are my shales? Shale rune weapon gives it plus 20% increased attack speed. Um, spoiler alert. I put one in, in this one. Uh, anyways. 
Um, you could put some shales in it. You could put some other useful, uh, you know, jewels or, or runes in it. Um, another, you know, just just to give a third option, uh, Barnard Star, a little bit higher end, um, has a lot of a lot of elemental damage, attack rating, and attack speed. Attack speed is really good for this character. But anyways, back to two handed, um, crushing blow, a bone snap, relatively easy to get. Enhanced damage, better damage to undead, crushing blow, resistances, that crushing blow. Look for that crushing blow. Um, you could also consider upgrading this uh, maul to uh, have more damage with a Haradra cube recipe. I actually did do that Haradra cube recipe with this rib cracker, which you'll see uh, a clip a little bit uh, later on in this video. Finally, one thing I do like to recommend as well, the best of both worlds, increased attack speed and crushing blow and then extra damage to demons uh, undead and just enhanced damage overall. I'd say the IK Maul is a pretty good option. It's a pretty good second best to a rib cracker. Um, increased attack speed, crushing blow, and it has sockets. You could put shale runes in it for extra attack speed. Now, there are a few other options as far as pole arms go. Um, I'm not gonna go over those. I think those are a little more expensive uh, in a way. Uh, what the real GG item that you're gonna wanna get is a rib cracker unique staffs the lag might actually is what it's called because it was upgraded but it started off as the lower version of, of that staff rip cracker increased attack speed i put a shale rune into it which grants bonus attack speed to get 70. the thing with the shape-shifting druid is the increased attack speed mod only works if it's on your weapon so this is the best way to, to, to get to it to get that value um, 50 is built in then you add 20 with the shale rune socketed in it it has 50% faster hit recovery, 281% enhanced damage. It's actually pretty good. It's like a pretty good one. It could get lower, which those aren't as valuable, and then up to 300%. 280, that's 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 good. That's the sweet spot. More would be better, but oh well. 50% crushing blow. I think that's the biggest amount of crushing blow we've seen on any singular item uh, in this build so far. So increased attack speed and crushing blow, and they're big numbers of those. Sign me up. This is like really good. You're gonna see me mow down mobs like it's nothing with this weapon. It's gonna be really satisfying to watch. But first, let me show you how I upgraded my rib cracker um, into its elite version of a weapon. Um, I use a Haradra cube recipe, the unique weapon, pull, lum, and a perfect emerald. That will change this from a quarter staff, only 164 uh, max base damage on it. Uh, it'll be increasing quite a bit once we complete this recipe here. So now it's a quarter staff. We have all the pieces. Lum, pull, perfect emerald. Hit upgrade or transmute, and it turns into a stalagmite. And as you can see, the damage jumped a lot, 472. That's going to do a lot for us, and it makes this a really, really great weapon. Next, we're going to add sockets to it. you got to use the Larzic socket quest. Um, well, it's really just one socket, and um, I think it's worth it uh, for, for what it gets you. Um, we're going to put a shale rune into this, which boosts the attack speed even more, plus 20%. That gets us past the breakpoint for attack speed, 70%. That's plenty for us to have on a weapon. Remember, when you're in werewolf form, only increased attack speed on your weapon counts, nothing else. So you really have to stack increased attack speed on this weapon. Now, I wasn't really gonna go over my weapon swap. Um, I'm not even gonna use this part in the, in the budget gameplay part of it. Uh, call to arms, kind of expensive, gives you extra life with the war cries. I'm not even going to explain it too too hard. Too hard. Lid list. I don't have enough strength for a spirit. Anyways, just just, just don't pay attention to this. This is going to be a part part of the the godly gameplay uh, clip. First, we're going to do some budget gameplay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and equip some stuff um, that's not as good as the godly stuff, just to kind of prove a point that we can that we can make this work. Um, let's throw on a smoke, or in fact, maybe I'll. Let's go on with Thuriel's Shiver, can't be frozen, we can't have Ravenfrost anymore, let's... Um, because it's, it's too godly, oh, too, too, too good. Um, let's just throw on one of these, like, doesn't even have lifesteal on it. Um, oh, whoops, actually, you know what? I'm not trying to waste a respec on this, I'm just gonna throw back Ravenfrost on here, just, just throw me a bone, it's not, Ravenfrost isn't that expensive, it's not, it's like a pull rune, come on, give me a break. Um, anywho... Um, you know what? Don't hate me for this. I'm going to keep the jaw elves on simply because I really want to do Immortal King Belt um, and Immortal King Gauntlets. I just don't have enough strength without it um, to equip the stuff or did, did that end up working after all? 
Uh, let's see, maybe that did end up working. Did I bug it? Perhaps I bugged it. Um, for style points, let's just put on the three-piece IK. Um, you know, attack rating gives me um, magic find. That's that's cute. Um, maybe, yeah, I mean, 40% faster run walk. Okay, that's cool. Raven Frost, keep it, throw me a bone. Slightly less ring. Durial Shell for cannot be frozen. In fact, wait a minute. This isn't this isn't what I want to do at all. Let's do smoke. Let's do smoke. Jolal's main. Uh, IK gloves. Blah blah blah. Random rings. Raven Frost. Throw me a bone. Uh, instead of the High Lords, let's just throw on this guy right here. Um, I think this is what this is what I'll work with. Show you a little gameplay like this. Um, to be honest, throw me a bone for the rib, rib cracker too. On a, this build is kind of built around it. I think. I would use this, this IK Crusher would honestly probably perform. I mean, it's not, obviously not as good, but it's, it's a good one to use. I just can't equip. I don't feel like wasting a respec and dumping a bunch into strength. Um, just, just trust that Immortal King will perform kind of similarly to this. Maybe not as great, but you'll, you'll get through it. All right, let's do it. And you know what I just realized? I didn't even talk about my mercenaries gear. House mask for the life steal and resistances. Pretty cheap. Um, what's, uh, not, I mean, it's still honestly not that expensive. Like this is such a classic rune worth to use for a mercenary. I already made like four of these for different characters. Treachery, shale full limb, um, in a three socketed armor. It's honestly not that expensive. It's great for a merc because it has increased attack speed and that's great for them. Um, that's really all the hell that is there. I mean, fade is great too for resistances. Uh, 5% chance to cast level 15 fade when struck. Increased attack speed. Uh, obedience. I mean, this is an ethereal cryptic axe, so this is pretty good. This is a pretty good merc weapon. The runes in it aren't super expensive. Um, you'll find them eventually. Um, what was really good about this one is that it was an ethereal cryptic axe, um, which really boosts the damage, but you can do it in a regular uh, pole arm, five socketed pole arm. Just, I mean, just maybe you want to save for a really good one like this, but I say screw it. Just go in whatever you can find, get that gameplay rolling. Um, it's up to you. All right, let's kill some stuff. I got my slightly budget gear on. Um, let's go in the frigid. I'm not even going to use my CTA. Um, boom, uh, boom, boom. Let's kill Shank real quick. Let's just give Shank a good shanking. So yeah, with the crushing blow, it's really good. I really need to proc Feral Rage though. That's kind of the key. That's why my life is going low a little bit. I was being a little sloppy there. You got to have Feral Rage procced. Uh, that's the glowing red orb around me. I'm using Feral Rage, my first uh, skill that I maxed. Or second. You max Fury first, then you max Feral Rage. Um, I don't have my Dracul's gloves on, which procs life tap. If I did, then I might not have to worry about getting Feral Rage up um, all the time. I may not have to rely on that glowing red orb there uh, to add to my lifesteal. Um, but in this case, I do, since I don't have life tap on my gloves. So remember that, folks. You only need to hit, like, once. You know, once it's active, you hit once to refresh it, then you just fury away. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty good, I think. I think I'm doing pretty well. Um, let me, let me, let me cut to the juicy part now. I think we've seen enough of this. I think you can tell it works. Um, let's get the godly gear action going on. Duress, which is pretty good. Jalal's, let's do my High Lords. Boom, boom. Let's do my Drax. Boom, boom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got my CTA swap that I will use as well. Let's uh, let's see. What's a really dangerous area? What's a really dangerous area I could show off? Uh, in, um, I think. I mean, World Stone Keep. World Stone Keep. What do you think? Yep, World Stone Keep. World Stone Keep. World Stone Keep. All right. Let's get all my summons. Let's buff with my CTA. Morph into Werewolf, then swap weapons. Pro tip. I really like the Karen Wind Ring because it procs Twister. When you run out of mana, you just have to spam Peril Rage a lot. 
Um, I'm amplified damage right now, which is scary. Honestly, I think I'd be doing a lot. Oh god. Well, check this out. <laughs> I'm murdering this soul group. That's how you know. That's how you know it's a good build. Ooh, a unique Naga. Oh god, I'm scared. More souls. Can we do it? Yes, we can. I mean, when it pro when life tech procs, it may be hard to see, but you can see like the sparkling red little residue above them, um, above their heads. Uh, that's life tap. That gives me huge life steal. So I just that's how you survive. You just life steal, life steal, life steal, life steal, life steal everything. Um, you'll see my health jumping up and down, down and up. Um, it's maybe it's a little tense with souls. <laughs> that's like the scariest uh, mob in the game. And it's scary to get mana burn because then, if you're not if you're not fast with it, with your feral rage, uh, when you're mana burned, you won't be able to use fury. So if you're just spamming fury, which is the one you want to spam as most you can, um, you won't be able to use it when you have no mana. So you just got to be ready to switch the feral rage, which is kind of what I'm doing now. Ooh. Oh god, oh good, thank god. They're immune to cold and not physical. Thank the gods. Um, let's just resummon my stuff. <laughs> oh no, conviction. I'm amp damaged. It's crazy. Look at my life jump up and down because I'm amp damaged. <laughs> they do a lot of damage to me, but I just life steal it back. You see that jump? Oh god, soul killers. Those little exploding dolls. Give me the potion. Give me that potions. So yeah, with all my gear considered, my resistances are pretty good. I mean, I could be working it more with more charms. I already am using a bunch of charms, but my, my light res is pretty good. That's really the key to it right there. Hopefully I survive this Hydra Fest. Uh, I think I will, mainly because I have so much damage that they just die. I don't want my Emilio to die. I was almost going to TP back home just for that. My precious Emilio. In fact, let's just do this real quick. Oops, missed it on my bear, but I just want to get it done. All right. Easy game, folks. Easy game. So much damage. Crushing blow. Just chips away at their health really super easily. Um, let's organize this a little bit better. There we go. Alright, the final stretch. This one maybe. No, it's got a man up. My Merc died. God damn it. It's a little annoying when they stun lock you. So you gotta you gotta shuck and jive a little. And he has conviction. Okay. Okay, that's a little GG right there. Um, I prefer to just spam Feral Rage on them so that it doesn't split the damage. Um, I just want to take down them one at a time. Man, maybe if I can, maybe I can, maybe I can separate one of them at the start, like right there. You can Fury that one down. All right, there we go. We've basically chipped them down. Just to kind of make sure you don't get surrounded with these guys. Um, then again. We ended up doing it. Rest in peace, Emilio. What's worth more? Using a full rejuvenation potion? Or spending 50,000 gold on reviving your mercenary? Alright, let's kill Bale. Hell Bale. With a Fury Druid, let's see how fast he goes down as the true, the true test. With that crushing blow. Like, look at his health just chip away, and now I'm going to start using Fury. Oh, okay, but he burns my mana, that, that, that biatch. And he knocks you back, which is kind of annoying, but... He gets him down pretty fast, pretty fast. Like, see, eh, for one guy, I'm just one wolf. Just gotta learn how to hit. Can I hit you, please? But yeah, that was pretty cool. We didn't really have to do much shucking and driving when fighting him. You just kind of just man mode him right up in his face. Uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, next on the on the list for this uh, druid is getting my burr rune for my chains of honor. 
Then we're ready to do Ubers, folks. Let's kill those Ubers. I've always wanted to kill Ubers ever since I was a little boy. And now we finally can, so stay tuned. It'd be a pleasure.